Hi, my name is Brad Smith. I'm director of the National Cyber Defense Force, and I'm going to show you today about Bluetooth, how to turn it on, how to assess with it, and how to protect yourself. I know you'll find this very interesting, and it's not a real technical level, but covers all the bases. You know, Bluetooth is in tons of devices now. It's growing from motorcycles to sunglasses to all sorts of things. Bluetooth has a short range unless you add large antennas for it. Remember they were stealing uh, celebrities' phone books because they had taken a Bluetooth, put a large antenna on it, and they were shooting across the street stealing your Bluetooth. Bluetooth has very little security. It was started by Ericsson, the phone people, and their purpose was a replacement for serial ports. And those of you who remember the old serial ports, they weren't very secure at all. So what I'm going to do is show you Backtrack, which is uh, made by Offensive Security. It's a free software package, backtrack.org. Um, and from there, burn down your Backtrack, your ISO image, which I'm sure most of you will know how to do. From there, I'll show you all the tools in Backtrack uh, that deal with Bluetooth. Now, Windows 7 has a wonderful Bluetooth system, and it actually allows up to 255 Bluetooth devices to sync simultaneously. Now, this is only in Win 7. It's one of the newer things in there. Why would you want that? Well, think about your current office. You get back from your office, you have to plug your Bluetooth phone or something into a cradle. That cradle goes into your computer. I mean, it's all of this. With my Bluetooth on in a Bluetooth network with its own DHCP server and its own security, gives you multiple choices on security, more than almost any other thing does. I can walk home, walk into my office with my Bluetooth. I can set my Bluetooth on the desk and it automatically then syncs my cell phone to my laptop or my main desktop server, whichever one I want. One of the big things growing in uh, Bluetooth right now, and it's a million dollar idea, get into it now, it's called proximity marketing. Using it in Seattle, they're using it in many places in Europe. You buy an inexpensive box, it listens, and when it senses Bluetooth people, it will then call them up and say, hey, come on in here, mention big beer, and we'll give you a 5% discount. Uh, several people here have uh, used it, and they just think it's annoying. Uh, one person said it was really great, because when you're hungry, you don't know where to go, and all of a sudden, your phone is pulling you in. It's called proximity marketing. Just do a quick search, take a look at it. This is one of the fastest growing marketing ways right now. And think about those people with Bluetooth. They usually have enough money to buy a smartphone, the disposable income. Those are the ones you want your businesses to appeal to. So, look into proximity marketing. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about here briefly, and I'll show you some great demos, is Linux and Bluetooth. Now, Linux, the backtrack version, is used for assessing Bluetooth. So I'm going to show you the, basically how to start it, how to uh, do the uh, scans around you to see who else is around, and then basically how to look at the information. I will not be showing you how to crack into people's cell phones on this video. That's a whole different video. So, let's take a look here and uh, take a look at the Bluetooth. We're using Backtrack, and I'll show you the basic commands for Backtrack now. Now you'll notice this is Backtrack. We have the terminal screen open in front of us. And uh, those of you who've worked with Backtrack or Linux knows it's ifconfig, wland up or ifconfig eth0 up. So what that does is then tell your, uh, to bring up that part. Well, Bluetooth is no difference. We use HCI config. So I'm going to show you this. And notice how it says I have a USB Bluetooth. It's really built in, ignore that part. And it is down. So if I wanted to bring this up into service, it's the same command, HCI config. The number or the name of it, and that's reflected right here, HCI0. So from there, it will be just HCI config, HCI0, and then it's up. And that brings us into service. Notice how we got no errors, and I just want to make sure it's all stabilized. HCI config dash A. 
and notice how it now says our Bluetooth is up and running right here. It gives us several other features. We're on a slave setup, which means it can't be the master. And most particularly, it shows it right in here as class unspecified. So if I'm trying to connect into a, a Bluetooth phone, I need to make this say basically uh, cell phone. So there are ways of going in and changing it, and it uh, takes a couple times to get it. Um, this is for the penetration part. Let's just do a scan around us. So HCI config, uh, C-O-N-F-I-G, scan. And notice how it just found that one. Now in Blue t uh, Backtrack, there are over 32 tools that you can use for uh, penetrating backtrack. And look at this list here. I mean, there are all sorts of them. So one of the things we talk about is just because the blue light is off, doesn't mean your Bluetooth is off. So there are some phones that you can't even turn some of the features off to make it safe. So what we're going to look at now is basically one called Blue Scan. Um, it's designed for scanning uh, for finding Bluetooth around you. And it's blue scan. You might notice that this is not an English language, but it doesn't matter. It works just fine. So what's happening now is it's scanning around us looking for any Bluetooth device that walks by. Ah, notice how it just found one for us. So this is the name of it. It really shows you the services. And remember, Bluetooth offers you services like file transfer protocol, um, object transfer, object push. And remember, if you can push something out, you can pull something back. So uh, I can pull your phone book back, or I can pull um, any data you may have stored on there. Notice how it continues to scan. Uh, it then goes on, talks about our human interface, that's our headsets, and good old file transfer, the old FTP. Now, normally there's little or no security engaged on these. So, let's take a look. This will continue to scan and show us all sorts of things. Other tools in here that, in the Bluetooth, that are very useful, uh, they're just very useful. One of my favorites is called Car Whisper, and I'll, sh I'll show you Car Whisper here. And that's radio, car whisper. Now, when I go on long road trips, I get bored really easy, and so does my staff. So with car whisper, what it allows us to do is actually send and receive messages to basically cars that are driving beside you who have Bluetooth in them. And so what they will allow you to do is then listen to the conversations in the other vehicle. Several times my staff has said, slow down, we want to see who wins the fight. And if you're married, you know who wins the fight. Um, this is just one of them. Now there's also another one where in there that will turn your headset into a live open microphone. So we can hear everything that's going on in your meeting. Everything. Think about how dangerous that is in the corporate world. Because most of the corporate people have good smartphones, the Bluetooth is on, it's convenient for them. But the disadvantage is when they're in a meeting, they're exposing their address books, all of their clients, the phone numbers, even passwords we found in there. So let's talk about defending Bluetooth, because I'm really big on defense. Set your computer or your laptop or netbook or cell phone to be undiscoverable. Just get a hold of your manufacturer. If it's undiscoverable, I'm sorry, this is going to sound weird. If it's undiscoverable, I can't discover it to then do the searches on it. So set your cell phone for undiscoverable. Um, turn your Bluetooth off if you are not actively using it. And remember, check it first, because if the blue light goes off, that doesn't mean the Bluetooth itself is off. Trust, but verify. You've heard that before. Um, other things to defend yourself on Bluetooth, only turn it on when you need it. Um, I have seen many meetings where people were scanning the uh, opposition, let's say, and borrowing things from them. Is it illegal? Totally. Is it done in business? Commonly. 
So that's one of the big things. Uh, if you're running Linux with your Bluetooth, be a little more careful. If you're running Windows or Win 7 with your Bluetooth, you probably got the best choice going right now. Bluetooth is in everything. It has become the new target to hack. Don't be fooled by the distance. They can go quarter to a half a mile already. And it's designed to go 100 meters. So we're really getting a lot more out of Bluetooth. Be very careful with it. It's uh, going to be with us for a while. And uh, learn more about it because it is a dangerous threat and you need to be a little more proficient with Bluetooth. I appreciate you watching this. Uh, if you have any questions, this is a great place to come and ask them. So I appreciate it and uh, hey, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.